When Burt met Sally Field for the filming of Smokey and the Bandit in August of 1976, their instant on-screen, off-screen connection helped make the film an all-time classic. Does this thing move? Oh, yeah. It was love at first sight. As soon as we got in the car, I thought, this girl is for me. We'd known each other about four days at that mm -hmm. point. It was instantaneous. Four days felt like four years. You can see it in our faces. You know, we were deeply entangled. The nature of it wasn't just, you know, oh, this is a love affair. He was incredibly charming, adored at the time for being who he was, a funny, self-deprecating good old boy, a normal guy on a big ride and getting one hell of a kick out of it. Sally and I seemed to click on many different levels. There seemed to be no limit to how much we had in common. That discovery was intoxicating. Known for her roles as Gidget and the Flying Nun, Sally's career had started strong, but she was looking for an opportunity to expand her range. So when Bert called and offered her the female lead in Smokey, she jumped like a frog at the chance to be in a big Hollywood picture. It was impossible for me to get a role in a film, and yet he was calling me to be in this film, and I couldn't figure out why, and then he said he always loved me in Gidget, and I thought, you love me in Gidget? One of the things people say about Smokey is you watch two people fall in love on the screen. And it's true. If ever the old cliche chemistry applied, I mean sexual tension was bouncing off the walls. In one scene, out of nowhere, she broke into a marvelous improvisation. We were in the car, and she put her feet on the windshield and started dancing and talking about how she always wanted to be in a play on Broadway. But God, I was so good. You should have seen me. You'd have loved me. She went on and on with the funny, open book kind of stuff that was brave and real. And that's when I realized I was falling in love. How would you describe your relationship with Bert? Um, uh, lovers. Oh, lovers? <laughs> Following the success of Smokey and the Bandit, Bert and Sally became Hollywood's hottest couple. The tabloids had a field day with their relationship with scandalous headlines, most of which were bullshit. I've never been that much in love before or since. Everybody was a blur except for Sally. We were a perfect match of flaws. We went together very well, but not necessarily for the right reasons. That's the problem. That's always been the problem. Both of us felt... <laughs> I was bending myself into a pleasing shape, a soothing, compliant cup of warm elixir that Bert was then lured into drinking over and over until he became addicted to the seemingly unconditional love I was offering. Once he was undeniably addicted, needing a fix of me, I'd be gone. He would never know what had hit him or how to get another supply. After working together on both The End and Hooper, Sally no longer had trouble landing great film roles. But she took Bert's advice on a part in the disappointing Beyond the Posada adventure. It was one of those disaster pictures. I thought she needed to do another commercial film to balance it out. It was guaranteed to make money. She did it reluctantly. And she was not happy with me or her performance. <laughs> oh, I want to get out of here! Celeste. Celeste. <laughs> Celeste. What? She never knew the best of me. If she had, maybe we would actually would have gotten married. I proposed three or four times, but she did the same to me. Each time, one of us would back out, saying we wanted the deeper level of commitment at different times. It seemed funny. Every time I wanted to get married, she didn't. Every time she wanted to get married, I didn't. So it went back and forth like that for four or five years. Sorry, I don't want to get married. Terrific. That makes two of us. I also remember her on another occasion saying, I would like to get married. Good, I said. I hope you find the right guy. And I'd like to be a successfully married person. But obviously not enough. <laughs> in the fall, Sally and I became frog and bandit again in Smoking the Bandit 2. Throughout the filming, Sally would get pissed off because we weren't doing the work. She hated that we were giggling and laughing and never saying the dialogue in the script. One of the film's many problems was that too much of it focused on Bert and Sally's real-life relationship issues. He loves me. He loves himself, he loves me, he loves himself. They spend the majority of their screen time arguing, and when they're not arguing, Sally is constantly putting him down. I've seen you with your clothes off, remember? Yeah, of course I remember. It ain't no big deal.
The romantic collapse between Bandit and Frog completely destroyed one of the most enjoyable on-screen pairings since Bonnie and Clyde. Although every now and then you'll see a little of that old charm break through. You want to make this last run so you can be famous again and be the old bandit come driving in there and be everybody's hero. But for the majority of the movie, it simply looks like she didn't even want to be there. My one and only reason for being here is money, M-O-N-E-Y, so let's get started whipping your ass into shape. <laughs> she still loves me. Through it all, Sally and I had perhaps the most heated affair of our relationship. By the time the picture was finished, she seemed to be working as hard as possible hey. to hate my guts. Where are you going? New York. Why? Because you're not there. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? When Bert and Sally are on screen, the laughs are few and far between. You sure didn't waste much time dilly-dallying around with another bunch of people, did you, once we broke up? Well, you were dilly-dallying around when we were still together. Uh, hey. At this point, their relationship was falling apart. Bert thought it would be a great idea for Sally to actually write their breakup scene herself. Sally wrote it because our relationship was over, and I thought she got a lot of stuff she wants to say. Why not do it on film? And boy, did she ever. You're a famed junkie. They might as well lock you up and give you intravenous feedings of People Magazine and National Enquirer headlines. And if you're a real good boy, they'll give you an occasional Tonight Show enema. <laughs> wow. But Sally was remarkable. Clearly the lines she'd written were about us. I'm not having any fun right now. Neither am I. Everything she wanted to say for a long, long time. And some things she'd already said in private. Being the man that he is, the image that he has in the business, when he's involved with a woman and anything goes wrong, he, the public looks at him, especially when, when the woman looks like me, you know. After the filming for Smokey 2 wrapped, their relationship came to a bitter end. And the winner is Sally Field! While Sally was accepting her Oscar for her role in Norma Ray, Bert, who was watching from home, was hurt to see her lash out at him. Asked what she thought while running down the aisle to collect her award, she said, Burt Reynolds, Burt Reynolds. I didn't cry. I'm going to be the one to cry tonight, I'll tell you right now. But I felt as if I'd been run over by a truck. I have no doubt why the breakup was so bitter and painful. Get out of my house! Get out of my house! Because we both were so passionate and both so deeply in love. Sometimes just two people, no matter how much you like each other, it isn't enough to have a marriage or, or a long-lasting relationship on. The two tried to reconnect a few times over the following years, but they were never able to bring back the spark that made them so inseparable. Through the years, Bert only had wonderful things to say about Sally. Giant talent, super lady. I have nothing bad to say about her, only good things. We'll be here 10 hours. One of the best actresses I've ever in my life been in front of and behind. Well, her ass was wiggling too. I think if you were going to go across the desert in a covered wagon and you could only take two women, she'd be one of them. She was the love of my life. I really, to this day, think she's the most special woman I've ever dated. Unfortunately, Sally had no issues poking fun at Bert in their years together. Smokey and the Bandit was a groundbreaking film. Lord knows without it, there could never have been a cannonball run. <laughs> Later, when I was sick and under fire, Sally did a Playboy interview. And they asked her whether I had AIDS, and she said she didn't know when she should have said, that's ridiculous, that's nothing to those rumors. Then in the same answer, she said, there's always been something going on around Bert. What the hell was that supposed to mean? I was shocked, and I still don't know what possessed her to say it. If I hurt you, I'm really sorry. I was very young. Not anymore, babe. In 1991, Sally made the film Soap Dish with Kevin Kline, who may look a little familiar to you as he wasn't really the first choice to play the role. You realize what a terrible mistake it was throwing me out of your life 110 Look years ago. You, you're exactly the same even for an actor. You're an egomaniac. Bert loved the script and thought the part was written perfectly for him. Hi. But most of all, this would have paid him his old salary for the first time in many years. Oh! Too bad Lonnie Anderson told him all of Hollywood would be laughing at her if he played the role, forcing Bert to turn down another fantastic opportunity. God damn son of a bitch! Perhaps these dinner theater insults were added after Bert turned down the role. What I did was horrible! 
no, 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 no. Dinner theater is horrible. Towards the end of his life, he seemed to be constantly trying to get her attention in interviews. I always wondered when I think about the women in your life, who would you consider the love of your life? I would say Sally. You could tell that he was hurting inside and really wanted to reconnect with her. Sadly, Sally's autobiography, In Pieces, was released at the time of Bert's death, detailing the difficult years she spent with him. I would feel him kind of reach out to me via the press. While promoting the book, you could see that she couldn't release the past and just embrace the good times. He called you the love of his life. Yeah. Well, He's in retrospect. Passed away. In <laughs> retrospect. <laughs> Watch for new movie reviews and documentary series. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell so you know when new reviews arrive.